Good evening. Today is Monday, June 11th, 2018, and this is the Cabarrus County Board of Education business meeting. I'll call the meeting to order. Our first item is to have a moment of silence for Mrs. Lorna Grant, an EC teacher assistant at Harrody Winkler Middle School, who passed away on May 27th. Please join me. Thank you. We'll start with our opening ceremony with a presentation of colors uh, presented by the combined uh, Air Force Junior ROTC uh, cadets. Please rise. Course would like to wait a moment. I'll let you do so. Okay. Please be seated. <clears throat> so presenting the colors today, uh, as we said, it was a combined unit of Air Force um, Junior ROTC candidates. First we had Cadet Senior Airman Jimena Diaz, Cadet Captain uh, and from Jam Robinson High School, Cadet Captain Eric Lozano from Mount Pleasant High School. Cadet First Lieutenant Leah Wise from Mount Pleasant High School and Cadet Senior Airman Brianna Leonard Lott from Northwest Cabarrus High School. From the A.T. Allen Elementary School Chorus, we have Garrett Collins, Taylor Bost, Sophia Chase, Macy, Macy Missler, and Jalen Rivers. Thank you all for being here tonight and enjoy your summer. <laughs> And I should say that was, the course was under the direction of Chelsea Singer from AT Allen. Thank you. I'd like to welcome uh, our SRO tonight, uh, Deputy Barrier from Mount Pleasant Elementary School. Thank you for being here. Board members, uh, it's time to set the agenda. 
And I will take a motion uh, that we amend the agenda. We have one item that needs to move from action, to, uh, from consent to action. Uh, policy 3640-5130 regarding student voter registration and pre-registration. I'd like to modify the agenda and move that from 9.01 to a new item 10.025. Do you have a motion so for that? Second. So we have Dr. Kirk making the motion to amend. And Mr. Shoemaker? Actually, Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison. I can never. <laughs> Second to that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes 6 0. Uh, and we need to uh, now uh, adopt the agenda with a modification as presented. Do I have a motion to uh, adopt the agenda as newly amended? So moved. So, Mr. Walter and Mr. Shoemaker. Made the motions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, 6 0. Okay, and we'll move into recognitions. We'll first have uh, Mr. Tim Bond join us and Mrs. Glenda Jones. Good evening, Madam Chair and Board Members. Tonight we will recognize our final Hillbish Ford Teacher of the Month for the 2017 18 school year. We're so very appreciative of Mr. Vaughn and Hil Hilbish Ford for their generosity and commitment to this recognition program for our teachers. So for the final time this school year, we say thank you and just really appreciate what you continue to do for our teachers. Our Hilbish Ford Teacher of the Month for June is Megan Allman. Mrs. Allman, would you, your family, and any members of your school's administrative team who are here tonight, please come forward. And I do want to ask uh, Ms. Angel Oliphant to come forward as our Director of um, Elementary Education. She is here to represent school administration tonight. You can bring all of them up with you. <laughs> Megan Allman is an exceptional children's teacher at Pitt School Road. She was nominated for this award by a parent who wrote, Mrs. Allman goes beyond her job description to ensure her students are learning in a safe, loving environment. Our child has thrived under her instruction and I am always moved at how much my child enjoys interacting with her. I am, I am in awe as I see the love she has for each student and the compassion she shows daily. With a nonverbal child, it is difficult not to be able to ask how their day was. Ms. Zalman always sends pictures so that we don't miss out on those special moments like sharing a banana with my child to comforting her when, when, it, when she is not feeling her best. This parent concluded the nomination with, Miss Allman does it all. She is more than a teacher. She is a nurse, counselor, therapist, playmate, friend, second mother, and my child's biggest cheerleader. Mrs. Allman, thank you for being so much more than a teacher to your students and their families. Congratulations on receiving the Hilvish Ford Teacher of the Month Award. Please allow Mr. Vaughn to present you with your award and then give our board members an opportunity to congratulate you. Our next item is for the Fine Arts Honors. We have Dr. Crystal Hill to present those. Good evening, Ms. Furtenbaugh, members of the board. We are super excited to honor our middle school chorus this afternoon. Would the members of the C.C. Griffin Middle School Chorus under the direction of Ms. Marla Young please come forward? Is C.C. Griffin here? Okay, I will read their award. This is for the 6th, 7th grade, and 8th grade chorus.
Both groups received a superior score in performance and sight reading at their music performance adjudication event. This is the first time both groups received straight superiors in all areas. Can we please give C.C. Griffin Middle School a hand? Next, we have J. N. Freeze Middle School under the direction of Mr. Daryl Godinez. Would you please come forward? Stand right there. We have two <laughs> individuals receiving this award. We have Noah Haberacker, am I saying that correctly? Who's in eighth grade, and Hans Kegel, who's in seventh grade. Hans and Noah were selected to represent J. N. Freeze Middle School and Cabarrus County Schools at the Middle School All-State Honors Chorus in Greensboro on April 20th and 21st. They performed in a concert with the best performers from around the state. Congratulations, Noah and Hans. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Great job. I think we should have had a performance tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, mark that on the calendar. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Next, we have Mary Elizabeth Morgan from Cox Mill High School under the instruction of Courtney Lehman. If they are here, will you please come forward? Mary Elizabeth Morgan, who's a senior, just graduated, right? Who <laughs> is a graduate of Cox Mill High School. Thank you for coming back. Mary Elizabeth's artistic piece, Flight, was selected by the superintendent's office to be displayed permanently at the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction office in Raleigh, North Carolina. Congratulations, Mary Elizabeth. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Next, we'll have um, Dr. Mary Beth Roth for the North Carolina Association for Scholastic Activities Middle School Forensics Tournament Champion. <laughs> This evening, um, first I'd like to ask Shrey Shande from Concord Middle School to come forward. We'd like to recognize Shrey for being the Middle School Forensic Tournament State Champion for extemporaneous speaking this school year. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mary Beth, would you have him just come to the mic to, um, Shrey, would you say what your topics were there for your three speeches? I just think it's very interesting. So um, I had three topics that I present seven minute speeches on. My first round topic was regarding uh, North Korea and how recent events in the US have affected relations with them. My second round was cybersecurity in general, just around the world, and my third round was immigration globally. Excellent. I'd like to ask Akshar Patel and Jaden Brown from Jay and Freeze Middle School to come forward. These two young men were the regional and state math fair champions. 
Congratulations. of the artwork. <laughs> Stay a little closer together. There we go. All right, awesome. Gotcha. Now I'd like to ask the following students and advisor to come forward. Sri Elia Paramal. Akshar Patel, you can come back up here. Jaden Brown and Campbell Depkin and their advisor, Chris Campbell. Yes. And Mrs. Bullock is going to stand in as the administrator. <laughs> These students were the NCASA State Writing Competi Competition Quill Team Champions. Congratulations from J.N. Freeze Magnet School. <laughs> I know that's amazing. It is amazing. Thank you. Wait till we see these yeah, SAT and ACT scores, huh? That's incredible. Congratulations. 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 Good, Good job. job. Okay, so Dr. Roth, you're finished with yours? Okay, now we have the North Carolina Technology Student Association Flight Champion. Good evening. Would um, Abby Eisenhower and her family and uh, any staff from Mount Pleasant Middle School please come forward? While she's coming up here, I'll read a little bit about the T uh, TSA. The Technology Student Association is a national organization of students engaged in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. TSA is open to students currently enrolled in or who have completed technology education courses. TSA's membership includes over 233,000 middle and high school students around the country. There's approximately 2,000 schools and also spanning 49 states. This year's TSA conference was held in Greensboro, North Carolina, April 11th through the 13th. One of the events is called the Flight Challenge. In this event, participants study the principles of flight and design in order to fabricate a glider that stays in flight for the greatest elapsed time. The glider must be designed so that it can be launched from a catapult that is provided on site. The design process is documented in a portfolio that is submitted for evaluation. Zach Trivet is the advisor for the TSA club at Mount Pleasant Middle School, and this year's first place winner at the state level in the flight challenge is Abby Eisenhower from Mount Pleasant Middle School. And our next recognition is for our own Teacher of the Year Board Representative, Mrs. Paige Norris. Would you step down to <laughs> the front? Paige, you need to come get on the line. <laughs> <laughs> 
Paige Norris, the, the current Cabarrus County Schools 2017-18 Teacher of the Year, began her teaching career with CCS in 2006 as a language facilitator in the Oral Deaf Program. This experience, combined with her passion for children and education, inspired her to become an elementary school teacher. In 2011, Norris fulfilled her dream of becoming a kindergarten teacher and began her teaching career at Pitt School Road Elementary School. In 2014, Norris transferred to Rocky River Elementary School. She earned a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, so I learned she was a Tar Heel, as well as a graduate certificate in elementary education from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. In addition to her leadership in the classroom, Norris serves as a mentor for graduate students at UNCC and is a school improvement team representative for kindergarten, the grade level chair for kindergarten, and the professional development leader and co-leader in several areas at both the school and county levels. Through the Merriam and Robert Hayes Charitable Trust, Paige will be traveling to China June the 16th through June the 27th with several other educators throughout North Carolina with the Center for International Understanding. This experience will allow Paige an opportunity to learn more about China's history, culture, and education system, as well as explore global challenges and develop potential partnerships with other schools and she'll be recruiting for us as well. <laughs> Stephanie Balkum, the 2017-18 Opportunity School Teacher of the Year, will be traveling with Paige as well. This evening, we would like to thank Paige Norris for serving as the teacher representative on the Cabarrus County Board of Education for the 2017-18 school year. Paige's service to Cabarrus County Schools is invaluable, and we thank Paige for her commitment to education and the students of Cabarrus County Schools. And at this time, administration, we'd like to present you with just a small token of our appreciation. And you notice the Arts Council, right? Because we want to support our local arts program. So here you go, Paige, and thank you so much. We will do hugs after, too. <laughs> I wanted to just take a moment, and if any of the board members want to chime in as well, to thank Paige for participating even on some difficult and delicate issues. Um, her opinion was invaluable. And sometimes it was discussions before meetings or after meetings, but uh, those when we called on her to speak, she handled it with grace and knowledge and uh, gave us great insight. So appreciate that. Any other board members' comments? Well, I, I want to echo the same sentiments on that, that uh, we do appreciate that. And that's one reason that uh, years ago we decided to put a teacher liaison on the board, that it's very helpful when we can get the words and the comments from the teacher, that it helps us to hear from the teachers to see what their comments may be, because they're, they're on the front lines. They see it firsthand every day. And it helps to, to hear what you have to say. And you, can, you have the eyes and ears in the classroom, and, and you know it, what's happening every day. And we appreciate it. And we're going to miss you. And uh, we're going to put you back on those front lines. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Paige. I'll just echo what I've said before. It's just been amazing to have you here, here giving up your time. I mean, every you're in the classroom all day, yet you take twice, you, take, you come to our meetings and spend hours with us, uh, outside of that, away from your family. And I, you know, I, I truly appreciate that and your your input, and you will be missed. And the board um, presented Miss Norris with a few small gifts before the meeting. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm confident that we learn more from you than you learn from us. And uh, your patience and your wisdom has always been highly valued. Thank you. 
Okay, so it's time to move on. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I was just going to say I appreciate so much the what you've done tonight and what you've done all year. I mean, from the moment I walked in, everybody made me feel so welcome and made me feel like my voice really does matter, and that means a great deal. So um, I appreciate everything I've learned from all of you, and I appreciate the dedication that you have to our students and teachers and families in Cabarrus County. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, now we'll move on to item six, the approval of minutes. Uh, you have two sets of minutes in board docs for the May 7th work session and May 14th business meeting. And I want to ask Ms. Monroe, did you get what you needed for the finish of the 14th meetings? Okay. I didn't open them again after that, after I had asked you. Okay. Do you have any comments for the minutes? Do I have a motion to approve? I move for approval of the minutes of May the 7th. 2018 and also of May the 14th of 2018. Okay. Second. And Dr. Kirk for a second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes 6 0. Um, next, we have, uh, I'll say, board chair comments, and I just have one thing I wanted to mention. and. Uh, Dr. Louder is actually with a school at a national championship today. Uh, they've already presented, but they won't know the results for a few days yet. So uh, at least they've completed that part. <laughs> um, just for my comments, I just wanted to uh, announce that the Channel 9 School Tools Drive uh, will occur August 1st to August 26th. Uh, Mr. Tim Vaughn, who is here uh, for the other presentation actually is going to be one of the Hilbish Ford will be one of the drop-off locations the West Cabarrus YMCA Thank you. Dr. Kirk for that will be another um, We have about ten locations uh, Hilbish Ford uh, St. James Catholic Church uh, and we will uh, Grimsley's jewelry. I'm trying to think of the other ones uh, a, a hair salon, but we will publish all those names. We do have a Facebook page out there the Afton Sunset Rotary Club is the nonprofit sponsor and our work will be at the benefit of Cabarrus County Schools and Kannapolis City Schools. So we're looking forward to that. So when people see their deals on school supplies, uh, please gather them up when you find the deals. Uh, and then you'll see the announcements on Channel 9 as well and on their website. So, Madam Chair, can I add something? Yes. Um, as a parent and, <clears throat> and with kids in summer school or in summertime, summer camps, and I'm not sure if the word gets out or not too well, but we have several of our schools that offer summer camps for kids that include basketball, soccer, baseball, football, arts, robotics, and a lot of that information, if there's still open seats, I think, on some of those schools. But if you look at the high school websites, specifically like Hickory Ridge, Northwest, Robinson, and Mount Pleasant all have camps going on this summer that I'm aware of. Just, you know, again, there's an opportunity that if you didn't know about it, we do, uh, we do have camps here at several of our schools over yeah. the summertime. Great point. Ms. Carpenter? Um, again, I would just like to say congratulations to all our graduating seniors. It was a magnificent weekend. I know that all our board members were there and I, some of our staff, I think we spent, uh, we just might as well put our sleeping bag at the <laughs> arena. But it was wonderful. I am so proud and I know our whole board were of all our seniors. We had some, I mean, the students were magnificent, and we just, I am so proud of our system. I, I, I can't say how I, I am. And I, when I saw all, all the scholarships and all the things that our students did, uh, you know, it is just fascinating. But a c congratulations to all of them, and you parents too. They couldn't <laughs> have did it without you. But I just wanna say, we, it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, weekend. And again, I just wanted to say congratulations. Okay, nice. Anything else, board members? Okay, we'll move to our guest speaker. Uh, in accordance, uh, guest speaker section, in accordance with board policy 2310, a part of each business meeting will be set aside for citizens to address the board through public comment. Each speaker will receive three minutes to present comments. Sign up will be available 30 minutes before the meeting begins. Speakers must sign up with the board clerk no later than the normal start time of the regularly scheduled monthly business meeting. Speakers must complete a contact information card, including their name, group if applicable, address, and phone number, 
and list the general education related topic of their presentation for the board minutes. Um, the rest of this information is actually in the agenda uh, for additional details. And we have one speaker who has signed up tonight, Mr. Jim Fulton. Okay, you may come forward. Welcome, Hello. and you, you'll have three minutes to share information with us. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, good evening once again to members of the board. Uh, Tim Lauder has just appeared before the County Commission and requested one and a half million dollars to push forward with plans for a new 800 seat school on the McAllister site. The money will come substantially from funds left over from various other construction projects. I would suggest that this money could be well used and perhaps better spent to conduct a thorough, independent, and unbiased condition assessment and feasibility analysis of Beverly Hills, Culture and Web, and McAllister to understand exactly what is wrong with these buildings and what will be required <clears throat> to renovate and maintain them in service. In the first place, this will give the board what is required to make a truly informed and substantive decision regarding renovation cost. In the next place, this analysis will certainly be helpful, if not required, to understand the cost of repurposing when and if these buildings are closed. More than this, however, I, I can't understand why the board is in such a hurry to close Beverly Hills and build an 800 seat, 100,000 square foot school that the community really doesn't want and is inappropriate for the McAllister site. The county doesn't have the need or the appetite to build replacement elementary schools, and they have said as much. The demographics are showing zero growth in K through five until 2028, especially in the R. Brown, Coltrane Webb, and McAllister districts. The need is to fund middle and high schools in the growth areas of the county. So don't overbuild elementary schools, sustain and renovate them. It makes no sense to close a 400 seat school and then spend $30 million just to gain those seats back at McAllister, which is essentially all you will accomplish with this new school. Pause a minute take a breath and gather full and complete information regarding the condition of our schools before rushing pell-mell to close them. Renovation may be a viable option, but I don't know, and the truth is you don't really know either. What I do know is that we don't need to be in such a hurry. You can't make decisions about these schools that are so important, transformative, and irrevocable with anything less than absolute certainty. So slow down and use the resources available to you to fully understand the problem before you take action. If you have misgivings about moving forward with these closures and feel you need more information, many of us share those feelings, and I'm here to give you the courage of your convictions as you deliberate before your vote on the 28th. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, board members, we now have the items uh, that last week we approved to move to the consent agenda. Um, as note, we removed policy 3640-5130. To action, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Okay, second. Mr. Walter made the motion. Mr. Shoemaker made the second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes 6 0. Now we'll go over to the action agenda 10.01 regarding the approval of policy 4700 student records on second reading. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Good evening. Good evening. Are there any questions regarding uh, policy 4700? Madam Chair, I'd make a motion that we approve policy 4700 as written. Okay. Second. Is that Dr. Kirk? Yes. So motion by Mr. Shoemaker, second by Dr. Kirk. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, so the motion carries 5-1 with Mrs. Carpenter um, dissenting. So next we'll move to item 10.02, approval policy 5030, community use of facilities on second reading. Madam Chair, move we accept as presented. Did, did we get an answer to my question from last week? Uh, what was the, please remind me. I think we added some, we added a, statement under item what is it b a or b and we didn't add a corresponding statement or d on costs mm -hmm. 
it corresponded with that. Okay, Rob, remind us what section you were in. I think it's right there on the screen. I'll second the motion so we can open for discussion. Okay. Who made you. the motion? <laughs> Dr. Kirk made okay. the motion. Mr. Shoemaker made the second. So has our board attorney reviewed this? Yeah, the, um, I wasn't quite clear on what the question was, but I think the question was with the addition in section B of number one, polling places on election days in accordance with 163A 1046, um, is, should there be something corresponding in section D stating that there is no charge for um, the use of polling places? Um, and there is no charge for the use of polling places um, we can't charge for that by law. We could add that to the policy if the board wanted to. Well, we just created a different category and we didn't address it after that. So. Mm -hmm. we, could, um, uh, we could either in B1 amend B1 to say polling place on election days in accordance with 163A1046, parens at no charge, close parens. I think that's probably the simplest place. Would that be okay, Rob? Hey, I'm fine with, it, with okay. it. I just wanted it to be consistent. I didn't want to create confusion by adding something and not okay. creating a new new section and not discussing it with the fees. Yeah. Will be. Okay, so if we add at no charge after the 10 1046, you could do that. Yes, okay. Um, so now I'll need Mr. Walter to recommend an amendment to the motion. Is that correct? Yes, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion to incorporate the language that our attorney just gave us. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Walter made the motion to amend the policy, um, and Mr. Shoemaker seconded that. All in favor of accepting the amendment? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so the amendment passes 6-0. Now we'll go back to the original um, vote and vote to um, take the final vote to approve the policy as amended. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the amendment for item 10.02, Policy 5030 passes 60 with the additional um, parenthetical statement at the end of uh, item one on page one. Okay. okay, the next policy we have is the one we move from consent to action. That's 3640 5130 student voter registration and pre registration. Okay, so it is actually in. The details are back in the consent agenda with the new attachment. I can share those if you'd like. Okay, yeah, That'd it has the blue font. I see okay. it. Okay. Um, the legal reference in the last sentence of the policy was changed. Um, the PLS update hadn't been updated yet, so um, Mr. Schwartz caught that for us. And then um, the Assisting students in the completion of the forms may only be done by board employees. So we added that at the end of the very last sentence of the policy. This says assisting students in the completion of the forms may only be done by board employees who volunteer to do so. So any questions on that update? How would that work? I mean, board employees who volunteer to do so would go to the schools to help students with these forms? No, no, a board employee is any, includes all school employees. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So the principal or designee would handle that at the school level. The local area. Yeah. And ask for volunteers. Okay. So they can't be forced to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is this, um, I believe it said at the age of 16, where it's like a pre-registration, mm -hmm. um, or at any stage where a child is young person is legally eligible to register or pre-register? Yes, it's when they're eligible to eligible to register or pre-register. Yeah, it's um, in the end of the first paragraph mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, move that we accept this policy as modified. Okay, we have a motion by Dr. Kirk. Second. Mr. Harrison made a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion passes 6-0. And we will move on to 
Thank you, Mrs. Burns. Be sure and let Ms. Reimer know it was easy tonight. <laughs> That's good. Uh, we'll have Mr. Ben Allred for the approval of the 2018-19 Early College Brown Cabarrus Community College Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, as you remember, of, it's actually MOA, it's not understanding, of agreement. <laughs> good evening. As you remember last week, um, Mr. Schwartz recommended some changes. Uh, he emailed me those changes. Um, I sent those to the community college. Uh, I got an email today at 5.05 saying they're okay with those changes okay. as is. <laughs> um, but I didn't know if Mr. Schwartz wanted to take some time. They were emailed to you late today. Uh, we got them over the weekend while we were all enjoying graduations. If you want to look at those, Mr. Schwartz, if you want to speak to them. There are a couple of uh, uh, minor editing changes uh, early on, but the major changes in section 9.04. Um, and the change was because there are uh, uh, a couple of recent OCR decisions and agreements uh, that were entered into. If we have students who uh, qualify as exceptional children and they're going to um, the college in a dual enrollment program, uh, we can't simply say that the college is in charge. Um, there has to be communication. We still bear some responsibility. So this is simply adding a provision in there saying that, that there will be, um, you know, necessary discussion to make sure that uh, 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 those students are, those students' needs are properly addressed and that we understand what's going on with, at the college level and the college understands what is required based on the students' needs. The last sentence there was to help ensure that each party meets any respective legal obligation. Then the three different parties to the agreement um, will develop a protocol to ensure adequate communication between the parties regarding each student with a disability who is enrolled and requests an accommodation. Um, we, we could have gone into a whole lot more nuts and bolts about how that will occur or anything, but at this late date in getting approval with three different entities, we thought this covered it. and. Uh, 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 Ms. Slingerland had no problems saying we'll figure out a way to do that in accordance with this agreement. So will this 9.4 section be inserted into the main document then? Or will it, it be a separate page? No, it, it will be insert, part of the main document okay. along with the other changes that are on the... Uh, Dr. Quillen, um, just in the course of the meeting, uh, inserted it, sent me a red line version. I'll go ahead and get that to uh, Ms. Monroe okay. and we'll get the requisite signature pages uh, for you and... Um, Dr. Lauder. Okay. So this 9.4 addition will be in addition to what's already stated in 9.4? <clears throat> Correct. So it'll be a second, it'll be a, a, a continuous paragraph or a second paragraph? It'll all be embedded in one paragraph. Okay. Thank you. So procedurally, Mr. Allred. Has this already been, th how many boards have seen this and signed it? Oftentimes we're in a tail chase of modifying, modifying, modifying. At what point does the show stop and becomes law? <laughs> I think we are good to say it. It stops here. We got lucky to get get approval from RCCC today, knowing it was coming to action for you all tonight. Um, haven't talked to Dr. Quillen. I'm pretty sure it's was sent to Rowan Salisbury as it was originally written. Uh, but he's been communicating with their uh, director of high schools there. Madam Chair, we will accept that as presented and represented and edited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kirk. I'll second that. With the very last version of their 9.4. Yeah. So Dr. Kirk made the motion. Mr. Shoemaker seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes 6 0. Uh, next, we'll allow Mr. Ben Ard to continue to be on the hot seat <laughs> for item 10.04 regarding the 2018 19 academic fees. Uh, last week, you all asked us to be on action, so I'll take any questions you have. Do these fees go into fund eight? When you accept any of these fees at the school level, where where does the, where do the, the funds go? I don't know what what's fund the, what's the process by which the, the funds are collected and kept for a while and then dispersed? No, sir. They they do not go in fund eight. They stay at the school level. So the school's general fund account, they would stay in in that each individual school's account until they. Uh, until they disperse until they pay the vendor for the services sure. for yes. in most cases correct and that's indefinitely or is uh, a week a month all year long or um, 
they, 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 they stay in their accounts. I mean, each one of them would be a little bit different. So the yearbook is generally an annual payment, and so that mm -hmm. would go out at one time. The, you know, the AP, it just depends on if they're buying supplies, and so that could be two or three times a year. Each, each fee is going to be a little bit different, and you can address So they're truly managing the entire amount until they uh, uh, provide payment to the vendor for that mm -hmm. service. That's exactly what they're doing. Okay, thank you. All right. Aren't these audited? Yes, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't, don't take me, don't, don't, don't take me wrong. Don't, don't, I mean, Multiple because in, in the reason I'm, don't, 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 don't get me wrong. No, but the reason I'm saying is what, in, what happens, say a child can't pay. Did they have something to say, okay, it's okay, and we've got an, something to, to pay that amount, or, uh, all right, we're going to have 30 children, and that should be X amount of dollars. Or how do we account for saying we know how much is this is going to add up to? When I say audit, you know, I know, you, I know how particular you are. And so, I mean, how do we audit? How much do we know this is going to generate? And how do we back it out and say, okay, this is what it adds up to and this is what it is how do we how do we actually audit and what if a child can't pay how do we take that into consideration so if you look at the bottom of the fee structure there's an asterisk and consistent with board policy it says any fees imposed will be waived or reduced for students who demonstrate real economic hardship so mm -hmm. typically the way that is is teachers know their students teachers know when there's an economic hardship social workers counselors etc in the school response to that. We don't withhold um, instructional materials for that reason. And I wanted to further clarify what the guidance we give. So take any of these fees for the AP. We do not expect or um, encourage teachers to just simply collect $23 for a fund. That should come in for a very specific item, a maximum of $23, and should not exceed what it actually costs to purchase the material. And it should be a simple, we bought it through the school and we paid for that item. Uh, it's not intended to be any kind of fundraiser or fund for the future. It is to pay for that item that is listed explicitly. That's the intent. Okay. I uh, know that's. No okay. Yeah. Okay, again, these aren't all the fees. So I'd like to see by the August board meeting all these extracurricular fees as well the field trip, the sports, the clubs, all that stuff as well. Um, if you could do that by August. Again, yeah, those, again, Rob, this, as was set up the last meeting, those are not academic fees. Okay, so that the, would not our, be Ben's purview. Okay, whoever collects that by the August yeah. meeting, I'd like to see a list of those fees too because it's our job to make sure these are consistent across the system, and I've never seen those fees yeah. either. And I just looked at the policy here, and the policy does say all fees, not yeah. just academic fees. Yeah. And I will tell you, historically, extracurricular fees have been campus decisions okay. due to some schools want to get warm-ups as a team for what? a certain thing they want to get t-shirts mm -hmm. do more competitions less competitions so which which is fine i just they just need we can have that discussion i just never never seen the fees and as a board member i think we're entitled to seeing that and making sure that they they're consistent well so, we i what i would that suggest is, that is, is let's that. ask staff for an update on the <coughs> process to review those fees we're not going to get going to get to a point where we're approving the minutia occurring at every school. All right. Well, it does say for extracurricular. We're supposed to approve all fees. What? Uh, it does say in the policy that we are supposed to approve any fees. Um, Except so. the extracurricular are optional. So. Okay, but it'd be nice yeah, to at least see that, and make sure that we're being consistent across our across our system. And we had asked, and because you know caps and gowns, and one of the things that come up last year was about the high school rings because I had heard somebody say, oh, but we can get, because everybody said that the ones that they usually get them from is the people they order the caps and gowns from. Somebody said, oh, well, you can get them so much ch cheaper from some other, you know, we've got numerous jewelry stores throughout the county. And they said, oh, you can get them so much cheaper. And I know they're pretty well, I mean, they're pretty expensive. And if a child can get them a lot less from somebody else, I didn't know if we bit them out. I didn't know what happened. But if they can get them less 
I mean, and I didn't know how we did it. I didn't know how it was done. And I didn't know what the price was. So ever how it's done, or again, I'd like to know how we did it, what's the price of it, and again, what that price mm -hmm. is. And I or, think that was, excuse me, was handled by Ms. Reimer's department, not by the academic area. Okay, yeah. well, uh, yeah. whatever, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> If but you, if I you would. like, Ms. Ferber, I can speak to exactly what okay. happened because we did communicate that to high schools if you'd like. Okay. Um, okay. We did uh, hear that request, so we aligned all of the days um, with one of the companies that has been doing that for years. We published those dates, send it out to those other agencies that request. Um, they have equal access on the initial day when students see that, so there's no, um, I guess you could say, leg up. Uh, for one company over the other so that invitation is out there for them to come for so everybody. you so you can imagine the cafeteria at lunch students get to see uh, one company two companies three companies all on the first day and we communicate that and align that with those companies okay okay so are we ready to have a motion for approval of the academic fees as presented madam so moved is that mr harrison Okay, Dr. Kirk and Mr. I made the motion. Dr. Kirk seconded. All in favor of approving the academic fees, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. So okay. we are going to get a list of the rest of the rest of the extra curriculum. I will fees. request how they can get that. Okay. <laughs> it's that's honestly, Rob. It's we went through this multiple times over the years. It's it's a difficult thing to put your hands on. It's a difficult, but it is a required thing. It says each principal must su submit a list of any fees to the superintendent by the August board meeting, so that it would include extracurricular or voluntary fees. Yeah. In my opinion, uh, Rich, can you just confirm for us? Does that include uh, extracurricular activities I, I outside of at, academic? I have to look at the policy. Do you have the policy, Forty-six hundred. And you can get back to us on that. Me, you don't need yeah, to answer give me right a minute, now. Let me look. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now we have uh, Mr. Rusty Parker for 10.05, the Career and Technical Education application for state and federal funding for 1819. Good evening. Are there any updates from what we saw last week? Um, one thing that I did have was the update on our federal allotment. Okay. So as of right now, the federal allotment increased from, I think, 252,000 to 286,000. 252,000 to 286,000. Okay. It went from 252 to 286,000. Okay. I know we kind of cut Mr. Parker off last <laughs> meeting in the interest of time for the public hearing. Um, would you like to have him go through? No, is there Some anything the that you wanted to tell us last week that you didn't get a chance to? <laughs> <laughs> anything, that, anything the public should know, otherwise I'd like to make a, make, make a motion that we approve the application. And second. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's let Mr. Parker answer the, Rob's question first. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to highlight to us? Um, thank you very much for letting me speak last week. It was kind of a whirlwind. <laughs> I just, I'm glad I was on the agenda. So thank you for that. Um, thank you very much. One of the things I was going to clear up I, about the positions that we put in place, there was no increase in allotments or anything on the positions that I had in the PowerPoint. I think there may have been a question come up about rearranging some of the positions. We, uh, we realigned some of our leadership positions in CTE. So when you saw special populations, that person was actually an academy coordinator who had that license. Uh, we now have work-based learning coordinators, which I really wanted to share with you because I know we've talked about work-based learning several times. So now we have four staff members who their title is now work-based learning coordinators, and that is their focus. And so now we're also going to have our career development coordinators working in a feeder pattern position, which uh, I know a lot of times they've been based strictly out of high school. But from now on, they're going to be in a feeder pattern position where they'll work for their middle school and also their feeder elementary schools, mm. So, which is thrilling for us. So. Yeah, that's great. So thank you. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Walter, and we have a second. Was it Dr. Kirk? Um, any further discussion? All in favor of approving the CTE application for state and federal funding for 1819, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, so... Um, Ms. Monroe, the next item is regarding the board budget and board training. Um, Ms. Monroe has nicely put together 
our history for the past year. I'm glad she keeps track of us um, and where we each uh, have earned ours. And I want to congratulate Carolyn on once again exceeding all expectations. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yes, you are. And David, you are second. And I am, I am a lowly third for the past year. <laughs> Um, yeah. As you all know, uh, let me pull up. I want to. Uh, I'm not going to be able. I thought I had this saved, <laughs> and I don't. I'm not going to find it quickly now. Um, we do have. We are legislated to receive 12 training hours every two years, uh, based on the information we have received. Um, we are, uh, one of our board members is a, is a little short uh, and didn't meet that goal. Um, and Mr. Schwartz, can you uh, please provide us any guidance on um, what happens if somebody does not meet their goal on training? They, um, it is a legal requirement. It is a mandatory legal requirement um, to get 12 hours of training every two years, including two hours in ethics um, within a, a short time after election or appointment um, and the failure to carry out that duty um, is uh, uh, potentially grounds for removal of a board member. Madam Chair, could I just take a point of privilege here and compliment Miss um, Carpenter on her dedication and, and the seriousness with which she takes board training Nobody can hold a candle to Carolyn Carpenter about getting training uh, <laughs> to serve on this board. She is um, always a, uh, puts us to shame, but goes, goes to great lengths to know what the heck uh, is involved with all of the, the scope of a board member. And uh, just Miss Carpenter, you amaze me, and I am very impressed by and, and jealous of your, your uh, ability to get all this training. You do a great job. Well, okay. thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's, you know, we hear over and over about being a continuous learner. And I think that's something that I really take to heart. And, and I, I am a continuous learner. And I think you can never, you can never know too much. Uh, <laughs> and it's, and I enjoy it. And, uh, and I try to get whatever I can get free. You know how I like free. And so I try to get, if, it, it, if it's out there, I'll, I'll try to get it for nothing. Uh, but uh, I enjoy it. And thank you, David. I appreciate that comment. And, and so I, I try to do as much as I can. And so I work very hard and I take it very serious. Got any extra credits you want to throw our way? Oh, uh, just, your just, way, just, we'll just, just split them. <coughs> but uh, I work very hard, and, and I try to uh, share what we can. And I think the more we can be educated, that that's what our job is. OK, board members, we don't have a vote on this. Uh, there's no vote, but I just want to ask if, uh, if we might have consensus to have Mr. Swartz advise the board member who's uh, I'm not sure what the right, right word has not met the legal requirements over the past two years. Okay. Are you guys okay with that? If we have Mr. Swartz talk to Mr. Powell regarding okay. following the, uh, the statute. Okay, so uh, that is the end uh, of the regular agenda. One question, how long does he have to, to complete that? Uh, Mr. Swartz, he's, you have the two it's years to complete 12. Two years from uh, the time you took the oath of office for the 12 hours. In every hours. cycle of, yeah, so this, these last, these two years are really the, really kind of the third and half of the fourth. Okay, so he is in violation now or he's not? Yeah, That's, he is. He is. So the other thing, and this is really not from the statute standpoint, but North Carolina School Board Association, as many of you know, uh, recognizing boards where everyone receives some training every year and then does a higher recognition if you have all met the statute, uh, statutory requirements. So unfortunately, we cannot um, obtain that recognition in either case for this school year. So um, 
The board will now um, convene in closed session. Uh, pursuant was, to was the ethics training never taken? That was just the, what's in there is just for the board members who were elected in the last cycle, because you take it every, um, Mr. Swartz, is it every election cycle? Yes. You need to get to the yes. ethics training. Yes. Yeah, so, Carolyn, when, when you come back, <laughs> you'll need to take it. Oh, well, I know in the that, next, the I, new year. I always take yeah. it, but did he not, he took it before. Yeah, but this was, this was only the last okay. two years, not the okay. last four years. Okay. So. Okay, uh, Mr. Schwartz, I'll start the motion, then I'm going to need you to add on to it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I'll take a motion that the board convene in closed session pursuant to general statute 143-318-11A3 to consult with an attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body, which privilege is hereby acknowledged and pursuant to general statute 143-318-11A6 to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment, or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer employee or prospective public officer employee, or to hear or investigate a complaint, charge, or grievance by or against an individual public officer or employee to review personnel recommendations. And Mr. Swartz? And add on to that, please. And pursuant to General Statute 143.318.1185, to instruct staff regarding the terms of potential acquisition of real property. Okay. Do we have a motion? So okay. So second. we'll do. <laughs> uh, Dr. Kirk for the motion. Mr. Shoemaker for the second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The board is now in closed session. We thank you for joining us this evening, and say good night to our audience.